everyone, now that we are inching towards the finale of Castaway Diva, figured I'd share some Easter eggs. Or, actually these are more like poached eggs. You're welcome. Let's start way back in the beginning at episode 2 with the shoes promise. So, if you remember, as kids, when they were running away, our lovely male lead had promised our female lead that he would get her some shoes when they got ashore. Well, it took 15 years, but here comes the tears. Our man's is a man of his words. How's he being so smooth at fulfilling this promise? And I dared ask, how does he know that she's a size 6? Moving on, we now have the rooftop serenade in episode 3. Did you tear up here? Cause I sure did. How are they heartbroken over each other being heartbroken? <laughs> because they just are. Look at the lyrics. <laughs> now let's move on to episode 4 with the interrupted phone call. You may not remember the scene, but this is where our female lead and our male lead were on the phone talking about, you know, manager and PD stuff. And look at his face trying to not smile, and then he gets interrupted, and the sly boy starts changing his reaction. He's very flustered, and then he suddenly means business and only business. Too cute. Okay, from here on out, we're just dropping hints here and there, including little things or big things like that voice. So here, we're basically having him realize about the whole lip-syncing thing and... Bam! Quite a realization! Next, we have emotions getting the best of us. Eight hey, this is the best. The truth is coming out. When our male lead playing noble idiot role is trying to convince the female lead that she should move the heck on, she ends up asking a rhetorical question without even realizing it. Yes, my boy, keep insisting it. Keep insisting it. And then of course he falls in love all over again. Mm-hmm. In real time. Okay, next up we have the bouquet incident in episode 4. This is basically the point where the very omniscient viewer should realize that based on the information here, there is no way our male lead would just know where to find our female lead. Unless he is really you know who. So now that the cat is out of the bag, let's take a look at episodes 2 and 7 stacked against each other at the lost and found moment to see what we were shown in the beginning versus the actual happenings. AKA the actual reaction that was hidden from us. Withheld from us. So this is episode 2 when there was a slight bit of cutting from frame to frame to hide the actual reaction. And this is episode 7, where we see the actual reaction. Girl... Boy, you are not dreaming. Okay, now I'm just going to throw a bit of fun in here because their dynamic actually just cracks me up. So this is when Mocha was going uphill and then, of course, our male lead pulls up in a car and just stares at her, she stares at him, gets in, and they finally talk. Notice the actual line here. Now, let's see them go downhill. Same interaction, basically the same line except, of course, now they're going downhill. What the heck, guys? Okay, now to wrap up, I am really having fun here with the fanboy moment, so please pay attention to fanboy moment number one of many in episode five, the wedding. Then there is the editing scene, another fanboy moment. And then, of course, transformation fanboy moment. And another fanboy moment. There are lots of fanboy moments, and we love them. And that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed my wonderful PowerPoint presentation that is totally set in the early 2000s, because why not? Please let me know your thoughts and your reactions as we head up into the finale and unfortunately need to say goodbye to this drama. See you next time. Bye!